Regina Michael. To the question, are we becoming enslaved? I say no, we're not becoming enslaved because we're already deeply enslaved. And instead of saying stop, we keep asking for more. But more surveillance does not equate to transparency. More information does not give us knowledge and wisdom. Dear Techno God, thank you for the loyalty cards, for the barcodes, smart cards, buy chipsy passports, for the 16 likes I got yesterday and three retweets, and for the CCTV cameras in every street, for the 167 iTunes apps I downloaded and never used, but they track me, for the gift of metadata and for data retention regimes, for the electronic gulags we are building, enslave us even more so we can fulfill the algorithm. Oh yes. And how about that permanent delete feature you keep promising? Ladies and gentlemen, does this make sense? Have we forgotten what it means to be free? I never told you to switch off your computer completely, to give away your dishwasher, your washing machine, your day job, or to stop talking to your friend, your neighbor, to stop using email. I'm asking you to get real. Go home and have a look in the mirror. Have a good look at your eyes. Are they sunken like you've been wearing an Oculus Rift? Do you get my drift? Think for a change, just don't do. Who am I? Who have I become? Who have we become? Switch off those devices. Stop. Think. Open your eyes. Reclaim your life, your kids, your spouse, your friends. Go outside and feel the chill and see the natural sunlight. You are alive, but the technology is dead. Your heart is beating, but the batteries are forever dying. Do we really wish to be the ones that breathe life into the machine? What will be the consequences of this homo electricus we're building? The predators will become the prey. We will become victims of our own creations. Yes, yes, driverless cars. But who's at the helm steering? <laughs> out of control, out of this world, do you think we won't be harmed? We just can't keep throwing technology at technological problems. Domino effect, parabolic trajectories. What goes up must come down. Forget the singularity. Where has all the precious time gone? sucked into vectors of nothingness, I ask you reflect, to ask the questions like, why am I here? What's my calling? It's to embrace, it's to look up, it's to be human once again. Thank you. Um, oh, I, I really don't envy you, Asha, having to follow this, <laughs> Asha Wolf. That's okay. Um, since we're talking about the singularity and the internet of things, um, the fact that the computer and your washing machine can catch a virus and malfunction doesn't mean you're enslaved. It means that you bought a crummy model from a crummy company <laughs> that doesn't have any virus protection on it. And, and I think that basically when we, we talk about the idea of slavery when it comes to tech is, you know, that we're being changed by it. Well, we've always been changed by the technology that we've engaged with. We've been changed by the fact that we've been able to use fire. We've been changed by the fact that we've been able to create a wheel or have the printing press and spread knowledge between each other. Um, in fact, since humans' earliest days, we've always been cyborgs. We take things outside ourselves and we find ways to use them as tools. And this isn't something that we should be scared of. This is something that has helped us to evolve as humanity, to make ourselves better, to pull ourselves out of the dark and the wild, and to put lights in our homes, to feed our families. Um, you know, the idea that technology changes us, yeah, sure, but we also change technology. We decide how we use it. And at the end of the day, when we, we, when we pick up a tool, we can also choose to put it down if it doesn't suit our needs. And I think that self-agency is something that's really important to remember in this debate. Thank you. <laughs> Alistair McGibbon, your two minutes. Uh, the other side's painted up, us up as being uh, technophobes and Luddites, people that have suggested that we should remove all technology. We've made it very clear throughout this evening that really we're talking about a small section of technology that we interact with on a daily basis, largely personal electronic devices. We don't deny the benefits that have come from eradication of smallpox or from the washing machine. Uh, great things. We question this veneer of technology that we now wear uh, in, in, in more ways than one. We're not scared of technology. Uh, and, and what we want to ask is how we're using technology. For every person that, that Asher and Anthony can name that pushes against it, there are millions of people who don't. 
So the four people that you named and said were uncountable, I can give you 40 million. They use technology in an unquestioned way. Ask yourself this last question. Why is the most popular school in Silicon Valley, the Waldorf School, where uh, the senior executives of technology companies fight to send their kids? Why do they ban technology at that school? <laughs> why do they ban technology until year 10 at that school when we scramble to get iPads for infant school children? And why does that school then say to those same families, don't have tech at home until you're old enough to understand it? Ask yourself that question and then ask if we are indeed enslaved by these beautiful devices. Mm. Good to see you. Well, I want to ask you a question, or two questions, in fact, because uh, Alistair gave us in his remarks before, not the summary, <coughs> the opportunity to do an empirical test of whether what their side is arguing is correct. So let me ask you, put your hands up if you've checked your mobile phone during this event. <laughs> well, that's some of you, but it's clearly a minority of you. <laughs> so now, wait a minute, I have a second question, and I still have my two minutes. I'm not, the bell hasn't gone yet. You wouldn't want to do um, too close a count, Peter. <laughs> the rest of you who did not put up your hands, how many of you are suffering withdrawal symptoms from the fact that you have not checked your phones? Well, that is a tiny minority of those of you who did not check your phone. So I think what this clearly shows is that the majority of us are able to choose. We don't check our phones during these events and we don't really care about it. So the world that the opposition was painting, I guess that Katina most vividly portrayed, is really not a world that we all live in. You know, you may live in that world. I'm very sorry for you if you do, Katina, <laughs> but I certainly don't. And we have the choice of whether to live in those worlds or not. Thank you. Hey. Peter, Peter, were you surprised by how many people put up their hands that they checked? Now that the vote's in. Fewer, but i um, <laughs> pleased that it was still a minority. Look, um, before, before I give you the results and let, let us all uh, head off courtesy of technology to our other lives, um, I just want to thank some people. Can, I'll just go through a list, but if you can join me in thanking them. So uh, these are Thea De Chaos, who's the producer for these events and many others. Chris Parker, who puts together the event management so we all get here and things work well. The staff and management of the City Recital Hall in Angel Place. Volunteers have conducted the ballot. Uh, every time we do this, there are volunteers. And the managing director and staff of the ABC who help us bring this debate. And it's been a really good debate, I think, tonight. Um, to, to a wider Australian audience. The Mayor and the Aldermen and the officers of the City of Sydney who help us uh, afford to do this, and our supporters at AMP and Professional Public Relations who also enable this to happen. I don't know if you know this, but um, the Ethics Centre itself is a charity and uh, we depend on donations and contributions in kind, otherwise we, we couldn't do this. It's, a, it's quite a, an undertaking. But before I give you the results, I mean, the real people to thank, uh, apart from those who spoke in the floor debate, are those who prepared for this panel debate. So would you please join with me in thanking Bernard Keane, Katina Michael, Alistair McGibbon, Anthony Lowenstein, Ash Wolf and Peter Singer. Oh, wow. This is pretty interesting. No, no, it's, this is really good. I love it when this happens. Um, so the, the topic that we were debating tonight before the House was that we are becoming enslaved by our technology. And uh, you may recall that there were 16 per cent of people who were undecided before the debate. That's now reduced to just 5 per cent. But it's what's happened in the interim to the other sides. No, it's quite amazing. You, you, you'll go wow too. Um, so. For the debate, with 46% of the vote, but against the debate, 49%. Yeah, ooh. It had been 29.5%. So both declaring the debate lost and the biggest swing, it goes to the negative. Please. <laughs> it just, 
I, honestly, it just goes to show what, what actual argument can do when you hear it. It's amazing. So thank you to all the audience who voted. Look, the next debate is on the 28th of October. The topic is that our society would flourish under the rule of women. Uh, <laughs> so that's a pretty interesting topic. So what do you do? Thanks to the speakers, thanks to Intelligence Squared, I declare the debate closed. Good night.